blessed ones, what vision shall I give unto thee this day? Save the vision of the chalice of all hallowed souls, those who by their own internal burning nature, completely identifying with the purposes of their Creator, do become, through hallowed oneness, inhabitants of a safe haven or heaven of manifestation. The mental picture you may use is then one of a crystal chalice wherein pulsate and live all souls hallowed by the virtue of cosmic purpose that have ever lived and do continue to live within the universe of eternal beauty and love. We communicate with you then this day a certain scientific sense of the nature of God who of necessity through his great wisdom possess the power to create those myriad forms of outer wonder which cause gasps of admiration and expressions of wonder and magnificence to all who behold. Let us then this day say unto you all that the secrets of God are the secrets of nature. And when men began in ancient times to probe the secrets of nature, utilizing the marvelous memory that God had bestowed upon them and the power of the Christic mind to explore those secrets, they were able one by one to obtain a relative sense of mastery over outer manifestation. And then, when abuses of the free will occurred, awful manifestations of darkness occurred, first in the mind and nature of man as they sought to enter into competitive advances of expressing a greater measure of scientific rapport with the universe and demonstrate their individualized mastery of it against their brethren, and thus horrible examples ensued and came forth upon the screen of life. And behold, in the higher octaves of life, where the great karmic board and cosmic councils meet, determinations were required to be meted out to say, Halt! You shall pass no further in your penetration of the secrets of God and the secrets of nature, you shall be stopped, for that which you have done is not only rebellion against harmony and universal law and love itself, but it is a frightful thing which has manifested evil in the garden of creation and has caused the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to come into manifestation through your abuse of free will. And now, least man put forth his hand and take of the tree of life, meaning, precious ones, reach a point in his development where he would be able to bridge the gap that governs so-called life and death and learn the indomitable secrets of life itself, thus perpetuating evil, the law intervened and the curtain of the night or of death that saith, Thou shalt surely die, brought into manifestation through the broken covenant of unholy lives, a necessary ringing down of the curtain so that man would not penetrate the secrets of God and of nature and become a god and live forever forever thus perpetuating the possibility of a dual form 
of manifestation for life, whereby both darkness and life could exist, and where such conditions did exist truly, infinitely, and eternally. Philosophically speaking, blessed ones, it would mean a coexistence that would not be peaceful, or there would indeed be war, constant war in heaven without end. For truly light, although it is stronger than darkness, could not continually contend with shadowed substance that utilized as its core a white fire core of light and life without love and without will and without universal Christ wisdom. I then point out to you in the mystery of life how that it was an abuse of the free will of man that necessitated the karmic decision to call a halt to the cycle of manifestation and to produce what we will term then the miracle of temporary cessation of life, the breaking of form that the spirit might not do irreparable damage to itself and thus lose that immortal flame power which God desired to transmit to every single expression. Do you understand then how that the nature of God desired to give the best gifts to the manifestations of himself, but so long as man was tethered to himself utterly and was of necessity required to communicate constantly with him, without any free will choice, individuals were unable to gain individual expression of Godhood. And thus, in order to bring it about as possibility in the world of form, God separated the individual monad from himself and imbued that monad with free will choice. It was then when the wrong choices were made and the individual ego desired to exceed its cosmic purposes of universality and oneness, but desired to build up instead a greater power of perception in a competitive spirit with one another, that the law was broken and this was behind the allegory of the death of Abel by the hand of Cain. For the offering symbol was a symbol of one who offered according to the will of God the fruits of his life symbolized in the burnt offering that would consume the dross in manifestation and seek to bring into the flesh the spirit and intent of cosmic purpose whereas the other sought to offer the outer manifestation of the fruits of the earth according to his own aborted concepts and in complete distinction against the purposes of life which were not competitive nor sacrificial but expressive of Christ's dominion. Thus the intent of God symbolized in the burnt offering was one of purity according to the divine pattern made eternal in the heavens whereby the individual would willingly consume the dross that manifested in the person, looking to the moment when the individual monadic expression would more perfectly, according to the pattern made eternally in the heavens, manifest the divine decree in all action, in all thought, and in all beauty. Thus, we see and perceive that in the ancient generic concepts captured so beautifully in the historical epic of Genesis, man is able to see that Adam Kadmon, Adamic man, and even pre-Adamic man, had within himself the seeds of absolute virtue and the seeds of perversion. For the seeds of perversion were in the idea that an individual could have free will, expression, or an expression contrary to the deity. This was not the divine intent, but was brought simultaneously into manifestation as the individual began to contemplate the meaning of freedom 
from the realm of the individual self. For when the individual began to think in terms of individualism, of separatism, and of such ideas as an ego, they were unable because of the smallness of the cup of their consciousness to actually recognize the marvelous radiation and virtue that was pulsating into that cup. They lacked largesse of heart and largesse of understanding and they were unwilling to follow the blueprints and ideas of the Eternal Father made eternally in the heavens. Abel was Abel, and Cain raised Cain. But I say unto you all that today this is also so, for there is yet a dichotomy of souls in the manifestation of those who at this solitary moment in time and history are yet raising Cain and creating wars and dissensions and confusions in the world of form, whereas at this same solitary moment, the sons of God are still seeking to manifest their perfection and a return to the law of the one. Outer men may, if they wish, find fault even with our manifestation of prophecy in this day. We are not concerned with their ideas and appearances. They have free will. And if they choose, let them separate themselves from the pulsations of the Holy Spirit. They will find that the enervating effects of life upon them will ultimately take them to a position of nihilism where they will no longer have any zest for life and will fail utterly to see cosmic purpose which must be continually reactivated by an application of diligence to the heart of God in full faith that he exists and that he is the presence of life that beats your heart. God beats your heart. And you must in a sense understand that as you return your energy to him, you are actually beating his heart. This is a great mystery and one that individuals do not comprehend. Yet they have dared through anthropomorphism to seek to create a God made in their image, but they have not perceived the power of acceptance of the reflected image as a means of creating, in effect, a manifestation of intertwined unity at higher octaves of manifestation where God himself is expanded through the forms that he has created who have become one with him and then having ascended back into his heart also enter into the cosmic councils of universal life and are able to say, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. This universality of expression that makes of the Godhead man and then of man the Godhead is an interchange of macrocosmic and microcosmic law. For God is the great eternal light that breathes the essence of himself into manifestation and is purpose born anew each time an individual is able to see a farther span into the great blazing reality of infinity. Purpose is born, but men possess no language in which to express it. Purpose lives, and men possess no means of action until the chalice of their being is expanded and they have understood cosmic law as they have understood in part outer law. Outer law and the law of science then has been mightily abused and men have continued to create in the world of form mechanistic manifestations. They have sought to express a greater rapport with God and have not known it through their use of electricity. God has allowed and permitted man to understand a greater measure of the science of electronics and electricities in order that the knowledge of impartation might come to them. This has been a fun but decaying hope for as men have expressed a greater measure of scientific rapport and have exhibited a greater control over the forces of nature instead of becoming more spiritual, they have become less spiritual. 
and have done despot to the spirit of grace that has released the secrets of nature into their hand, and thus with succeeding generations, unless perchance the spiritual laws of the universe and of brotherhood shall come forth to greater measure, they will, through the perverseness of their nature, enter into warlike covenants with themselves, desiring to express one facet of themselves and then another portion of life, another facet of themselves, and these two facets in extreme war will extinguish both facets, and both shall cease to be. And thus the world will be rent by war, and mankind's bodies torn because of the jagged concepts they now hold. This will come to pass without question unless man exercise some spiritual control over their being, some control of virtue and integrity. For integrity is a sense of universal integration, whereby each monad desires to become one with his own immortal presence. When this occurs properly, there is never in outer manifestation a need for human discord, for all are in effect one with one another as they become one with God. This is law and it cannot be denied. We then today, exhibiting and expressing this great law, come to you to say and to plead with science to recognize that science has but proven God. For as science has expressed in fuller measure the intricacies and wonders of nature, it has more clearly unveiled the face of universal creativity and the mind of God inherent within nature as the pulsating creative essence of universal wisdom and the power of the Logos. What then shall we do from inner levels as we gaze upon the perfidy of man who seek through atheism and agnosticism to question universal law? How shall we indeed break these matrices of darkness that are spawned by individuals who full well know the reality of the eternal but have themselves rejected it? They then, using the power of God himself, turn it against God and express it through puny individual men who have not yet come to the point of self-realization. Because they do not know and do not comprehend themselves, they are easily molded according to the imperfect images of mortal concepts and of the concept of those demons and powers of darkness that dwell at nefarious levels of human consciousness and are nourished by human discord. We say then, these are spawns of darkness and they live as parasites upon mortal men's energy and they create constant innuendo in mortal affairs so that they may have energy through taking it off from mankind even as though men were but beasts of burden to be milked and to feed the nefarious activities of life which are destroying them. Now then, in the midst of all this, the hosts of heaven, lacking the propagandic efforts of mass media, are themselves supposedly handicapped, for all we can do is express to the few who are in tunement with us, and express lavishly through those few, whereas outer men constantly through the misuse of the law of knowledge, exploiting mankind even by their PhDs and by their various externalized points of honor, are able to convince mankind of their ability without actually possessing spiritual ability to penetrate behind the veil. What shall we then do? Shall life fail? I think not. We shall continue to expand our radiation to those who are willing and ready to listen to us, who can see that the great balance of nature is on our side, for nature in truth is one aspect of God. God has indeed, as this messenger told you, geometrized in form and spirit behind form. If spirit withdrew from form, would collapse form as a house of cards. We say then to all that the beauty and radiation of our purpose in this day and age of darkness 
when the world has misused knowledge and science to turn science and knowledge against itself and to annihilate it, must awake and perceive that God lives as the only sole supreme purpose in universal law. That his law is life. That his life is transmitted. That his life must be apprehended and sought. That man must seek if they will find that the law must live and act in man in order to reproduce itself according to universal plan. For unless this be done, I hasten to assure you that we will have to, of necessity, create a universal cosmic arc of light that we may take the souls from this planet to another and a haven of greater safety. But I also hope that this will not be, for I assure you that there are upon this planet countless elemental beings, as well as cosmic emissaries and great souls who have sworn according to the oath of the Bodhisattva and I do not mean to convey here that we approve of an oath, for this is actually one which is not as men understand it, but is a pact or covenant of great light to uphold the divine law and to abide upon this planetary body so long as a soul shall live in darkness seeking their illumination. And we are concerned also for these bodhisattvas and great souls who have identified themselves with this great, terrestrial globe, Terra. We say then to Terra herself, who has now these many years yielded her fruit in season, how blessed art thou, O Mother Earth, Prosperina. May God prosper thee, and may thy yield this year be abundant, that all upon this planetary body may eat well of the manna that comes to feed the outer self, but may they not be denied that manna that is for the inner man. May the fruit of the Spirit manifest then as integrity in joy, in love, in peace, in harmony, in beauty, in a sense of the divine, and in an ultimate overcoming victory for each life stream. Unless this can be done, oh, what blighted hopes will come to our eternal divine preceptor. Oh, what blighted hopes will come to the heavenly emissaries who hold these immaculate concepts for all. And oh, what blighted hopes will come to the devotees upon the planet who have longing looked for a manifestation of the golden age. That it shall come, that it will come, that it must come is the prayer of these. And I join you. Muster then your prayer force. Muster then your decree force. And let not those who do not understand decrees frown upon them, nor let us direct mankind against prayer itself, for both are essentially a communicative and invocative measure of perfection for and on behalf of life. Let all then radiate out into the world of form that diligent application that will assure to all the fullness of light to dissolve the densities of human creation once and for all, and to continue to press mankind forward into the full measure of his cosmic Christ identity when the light of God in its great unfailing scope radiates out and gathers together from the four corners of the earth those devotees of the light who are persuaded that the laws of God are the laws of infinite reason and that infinite reason supersedes all the laws that mankind may have garnered in the course of one or many earth embodiments. And we seek to convey from the fullness of our hearts and the depth thereof all the longing fulfillment of universal life for itself in outer manifestation that no son of God may go the way of the aborted son, the prodigal son, and remain long in delusion. We seek to eliminate confusion and all that is shadow and substance of shadow, and to let the unfailing light of God expand and expand and expand until his law brings to all who have a countenance the shine and radiance of his face, that they may express his face to one another as the smile of his presence invokes the beat of life within the harmonic law of their own heart. May the bonds of universal love seal you now forever 
in the center of the will eternal. May the fruit of experience be one of victory in manifestation and may the power to overcome outer conditions bring to you the spirit of life that assuages all discord and lesser measures by the great love tide of universal application and appreciation, a heart of gratitude that invokes more of itself until through the overflowing of life eternal into the chalice of mortality, outer manifestation shall become the perfection of the within and the kingdom of God shall become the crown of life to each portion thereof. This is our wish. I am, by the grace of God, the great divine director. I am, by the grace of God, the eternal preceptor for this planet. And by the grace of God, I have come this day to invoke life upon the planet and to command purity in life and to command righteousness, which is God's, into manifestation all over the earth. We march this year, and the forces of light from this day forward shall begin their march across the planetary body, an army of light from heaven to create a new impetus for brotherhood and purity and strength and love and the invisible swiftly moving into visibility. In the name of Almighty God, I thank you. shown in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. My sheep know my voice, and understand that where two or three are gathered together in my name and by my power and spirit, there I am in the midst of them. The peril of the world is unparalleled and in a very real sense I say unto you all that our Heavenly Father, the eternal God, is crucified in matter. His energy is involved in that which men do for there is no other source of energy 
than that which cometh from on high. And men would do well then to understand the heavenly rule and measure that they meet out for whatsoever men shall meet out, it shall be measured unto them again. And it is not vain words that speak, but the law of life, eternal, as life calleth out unto life, and speaketh by the passion of that divine love that framed the worlds and made each starry system to give that joyous gasp of cognition, saying, Lo, I am come. For out of the void and the darkness, the beauty of the light shone, and the light was charged with hope, and the hope was given unto mankind, and it is as a swaddling garment that encloses men around about with light, and there is no darkness in it at all. For behold, the purity of that essence is the basis of creation. It is the song and joy of God as it throbs through the universe and bursts each day into splendid rising as the sun of hope upon the horizon. In your hearts and minds you know that God does love you. In your hearts and minds you feel devoid of words and the comprehensions of man's ideation that the throb of immortal love and the passion of God as life for life is within you and in the world and in nature. And behold, in its basic simplicity, it comes into the mind as joy and hope. But the world has enclosed it as in a box, and behold, it has become a shroud, and gloom is spread among mankind, and the fear of death, and of that which shall be. That which is, is that which shall be. That which was, is that which shall be. For the future is spun, out of the present moment, and men must see that the lingering remnants of divine grace are apparent and manifest in the flame of life that is within their heart. If tonight I could gather all of the children of men to gather upon one hillside, and if I could speak unto them all, it would be the message of the resurrection and the ascension. I am the resurrection and the life. Is the power germinal within you that from the beginning framed you as a child of beauty and radiant joy? You were then glorious in your appearance and there was not a single shred of darkness or unknowing within you. But men have compartmentalized the universe and subdivided it into portions as was spoken of old and Adam saw the animals which were created and he gave them names. In that day the day of Adam, the day of mortality of the red earth, man came forth, the Babylonian creation, to rise to the apex of many civilizations and cycles. But out of it all was the eternal call, the immortal pursuing of immortality, pursuing immortality in form, and seeking to break that form that the remnant control could be aborted and the perfection of the presence replace it. The perfection of the presence is a splendid shining thing, not for the dust of a moment, but for the burnishing of eternal values. This beauty and perfection 
that is within the mind and heart, it has the power to tremble the outer world and the outer form and to show to that form the reality unveiled within. Men must learn then to sunder the veil that separates the holy place and the most holy place that the high priest of the holy Christ self may pulsate and rise to the vision of the eternal Father. And beholding the eternal Father, vouchsafe to the Son below, the presence immortal, that seeing may become being, and men may pursue that view which is light eternal upon the mountain of man's hopes, a towering hope that will not let you down. I come to you then tonight to cite a memorial to all who in the lowly places of this earth planet have kept the vigil in their heart of the sacred fire, who have kept faith with the immortal presence and have understood that heaven has gazed upon mankind in his struggles and sought the emancipation of every soul. We have seen every individual who have cried out in the night for assistance in moments when the world seemed dark and the person to act as a shroud enclosing self. Then we have come, and suddenly, in the midst of despair and turmoil, there has been the breaking forth of the light, and the light has brought the glimmer of hope, first a small light, and then a sunburst ultimating. O oh, precious ones, how glorious is the seed of faith in anyone, woman, man, or child. For out of faith is born the will to pursue the goal and to conclude the mission unto its end. And so in this place, small by mortal standards, where a few can gather in my name, there has come this night a great light. Our Father, we call unto thee to pierce the void, the veil of mortal illusion, and bring forth some remnant of thyself as shining fragment immortal. Let each soul then be touched by a coal from thy altars, that the throb of thy power may be made known, that no longer shall men dwell in faithlessness, but in the fullness and beauty of hope. Let all feel the pulsation of thy reality in themselves for a moment that they may see. I ask it, O Eternal One, because thou hast loved the many. As thou hast loved them, O God, I call unto thee, so do thou bestow upon them the vestments of hope, that that hope that they receive may be nourished by faith, and then through the alchemy of action, producing the miracle of the Holy Spirit, culminating in a temple in which dwells thyself in fullness, in beauty, in the eternal showing of thyself. Take each one then of these my sheep who will hear my voice and lead them by the hand gently beside the still waters of knowing of serenity and perfection and faith. Let them understand the miracle of the cruise of oil that failed not. Let them understand the miracle of faith and perfection and let the focus of light created here be nourished by hearts who will understand the perils of the moment and to offer their energies to the light that out of the light that we are may be born in the world of form 
the eternal city, the glowing fire city of the sun, that the children of the sun may be nourished and the garments of the sun become their garments, that the wind become the means of uplifting them and initiating them in to the joy of the Holy Spirit and the purity of thyself in action. And now, as we enfold them in our love, may they consummate within the ritual of becoming all that I am. May they understand that to claim this is their birthright immortal, that they have but to seek and to express that reality which thou art, which I am, that they have but to claim this for themselves, and so it will be. When men understand the simplicity of a child, that as a little child they can receive the Father within, it will come to pass that the ashes of worldly conceptions will no more be their concern, for the fire that shall try every man's work shall also produce that transmutative example of beautiful eternal perfection whereby the clay vessel is molded in our image and the consciousness itself becomes a chalice cup that we may pour in those higher dimensions of reality until all become that ocean of beauty and strength that we are. Our Father, we thank Thee this moment for this moment, and we thank Thee for eternity, for eternity. We ask then that the angels of my band, twelve legions of angels, shall come forth now in Thy name into the world, in this moment of peril, to aid all who love in their becoming that love. For there are forces of darkness and destruction in the world that would part mankind from his spiritual heritage and destroy his faith. Let us then call for these angels from on high to descend to join in with Archangel Michael's power to defend this very hour the youth of the world against the depredations of the brothers of the shadow who have sought to bring in all manner of dark conditions into the world whereby men are splintered from the light of the eternal presence and the light of hope then is gone out. Having no spiritual hope, they pursue a short aim of temporal power and pleasure. We come to bestow upon all the rose of Sharon, the fragrance of immortality, the joy of the angels, the strength of God's arm, and the power that leadeth unto life eternal. We bestow then this hour our love upon you. We bestow then this hour our wisdom upon you, and we hold in abeyance our power. For power given to mankind until he is able to use it can become a weapon for destruction and the production of much karma. This was why the lords of karma long ago, precious ones, did cause the silver cord connecting mankind's physical body temple with the light of his presence to be decreased in size, thus terminating man's life span. Now then, precious ones, understand that this was by cosmic plan and purpose. But recently, in one of the classes for those in attendance, there was given a dispensation whereby that stream of radiant energy was enlarged twice its size. We show then the mercy of heaven to all that are here, that you may understand that this moment the world is in brutal peril, yet we live and the masters of wisdom serve to give to you our love, and that love is great enough 
to save the whole world from destruction even expressed to this few. For I bring now into view the holy circle of the twelve. For there are circles even as in Ezekiel, wheels within wheels, cadres of masterful persons that work and serve together in various eras and areas of life. These individuals coming from distant star systems as well as your own solar system do manifest specific intent of God direction. And you are very blessed then to have with you tonight from Venus, that beloved and magnificent Holy One, Sanat Kumara, Lord of the Flame, who has this night come to me and graced this platform with his presence. This then shows that Terra is very much blessed because there are circles and circles and circles of individuals drawn together for specific services. Have you thought upon it, precious ones, how that you are moving in a specific circle of family and friends, how that you are moving in a specific circle of country and race, how that you are moving upon this planet as a circular orbit around the sun system. All these circles are intended as focuses where individuals can serve and together retain and grow, expand and love under the aegis of the Holy Spirit until the whole circle becomes the illustrious glow of the intentions of our Father who art in heaven. The time has come when I must leave you, but I have not left you comfortless, for my spirit remains with you. Lo, it remains with you to comfort you forever, and I also will come when you call upon me for the purposes of our Father's work. Out of the light I will come and I will bring the fervor of my feeling into manifestation within you and the joy of my abundance. I will enfold you as with swaddling garments. And behold, these garments are garments of light. And I will drive out fear and I will position you in a sense of immortality and I will show you the way to go and the masters of wisdom that work and serve with me will also come to you and be your brother even as I am for we are indeed our brother's keepers and let all understand that to hold the flame high to hold the flame sacred is the God intent for every man. The Lord God will not leave you comfortless, but he will send a flame within you that shall pulsate there and be the keeper of your destiny. Understand then that communion with our octave and the ranges of light is the only reality that the world ought ever to know. For all that the world knoweth today of knowledge and the fashion thereof shall pass away and be no more. But the light which I am, the illumination flame, from whence all outer knowledge came, will remain to produce the miracle of those cities of light, those alabaster, beautiful, glorious, eternal cities that are the intent of God, where harmony shall reign in every heart and peace at every hearth. Grace, perfection, and God's will Unto you all, I thank you.
The solemn banner is unfurled. It is the banner of joy. It is the banner of perfection. It is the banner of purity. The night is pierced with the radiance of the instellar light of perfection from the heart of God. There is no need for men to fear or to quiver in indecision for the decision for perfection from the mind of God from the beginning was so ordered. It is life and purity as was released from the heart of the creative master of universal life. Now come the veiled communicants upon the mountain ascending one by one and in little bands. Now they come rising slowly and they buffet their feet against the rocks. Now there is a disturbance here and a disturbance there and we must spend our time quelling disturbance while the banner from the summit reveals itself with the fervor of the fiery ones whose every hope is for the magnification of cosmic intent. The purpose of cosmic initiation is to bestow the reality and the vestments of reality upon every individual, that every individual may know for himself the meaning of life and seek it not in the counsels of another. The Most High God has implanted in the seed of man in his own seed, Veritas, all that is truth. And this truth must be sought. It must be pursued as though it were the only power in existence. For as long as men seek for all of the issues of mortal thought and feeling which are illusion, reality will escape them and they do not seem to understand that the dust that is raised in the battle is to obscure the image of the shield of divine perfection. Let all then who would render cosmic service unto God within the solitary recesses of their own being commit themselves now unto the domain of infinite reality and understand that the splendor of that reality that shines through the grail of outer appearance is the real. All else is but the disturbance of the dust pulsed by a wind that is inordinate and often causes men to fear and to doubt and to be assailed by a host of thoughts that are imperfect in themselves. Let all understand that imperfect thoughts must produce the fruit of imperfection. Only by the perfect thought and the magnification of the perfect thought are individuals able to find their freedom and to understand the need to assert it by the power of the spirit of life which bursts within them as the eternal spring. We then who function in those domains of light and the majesty of light assure you that the hem of our garment is available that you may touch it. But if touching it perchance and you are healed, and you produce the same unmiraculous cause that caused it to come forth in the beginning, what then? What then? For the purposes of life must be served and those who track out in this nomadic wilderness and assert the unrealities of life when life is all around them with the real will always find the need to summon hope 
for it will perchance escape them when it is needed most. We urge all then to understand that the building of the cosmic city, whether it be the city of St. Augustine or the city of the New Jerusalem, is not the act of a solitary moment, but it is the accretion of holy energy summoned over the span of a lifetime when the rainbow realities of life were gathered in preference to the cobwebs of misshapen identity and the sowing of vanity into the cup of being. Whence, whither, why? What direction shall man take? It is the direction of shaping those holy ends to which he was born, to wit, that he might produce the beauty of purpose. And purpose herself is as a virgin waiting the coming of the heavenly bridegroom, the union between the outer manifestation in its readiness to obedience and the spirit of that obedience that longs to bestow the vestments of immortal life upon those aspirants who are ready and are willing and the summoning of the will is vital and important for the summoning of the will is a tangible reality and the will is not of flesh and blood it is the fervor of the spirit whereby the bones are strengthened made fat and the mind infused with that spirit of merriment which is the joy of God that partakes of the elixir that causes mankind to understand that the fountain of youth and abundance and joy is within and that joy is the motor of life which removes from his mind a sense of frustration and dullness. For we call and we summon to beauty, we call and we summon to unity, we call and we summon to purity, and the past is prologue, and it has no meaning except that it must be redeemed as one holds a rosary and bead by bead causes it to pass through their fingers, identifying it momentarily. So each deed strung on the chain of the years must be summoned and perfection required to replace imperfection. And there is no possibility whatsoever that any individual can come to our abode until they are ready and have produced the fusion between the unreality, unrealized man and the divine God-realized man, the fashion of that which is made eternal in the heavens, which is the living span that leads from the bridge of mortal consciousness unto the realm of the immortals where the beautiful alabaster cities gleam not only as the tangible reality of a moment but as the reality of foreverness. I speak then of the need in this city of Washington to cognize and to understand the getting of understanding. For the mind becomes a sieve when it comes to the test and the precepts and principles of the Christ and the Buddha are ignored in the hot-headedness of mankind as they egoistically pursue their vanity and forsooth are more an example of the serpent crawling upon his belly upon the ground than of the winged one, the lifted up golden serpent that was lifted up in the wilderness as the symbol of the Christ, for the Christ did indeed plant his heel upon the serpent's head, but so long as the wisdom of man, that is foolishness with God, is used to multiply nefarious activity and to spread the poison of hatred and discord in the world community, mankind cannot build the city of God and cannot understand the fashion thereof. But we are watching from the towers of our radiance in the immortal heavens and we are bending low hour by hour to answer the entreaties of mankind imploring us to intercede according to our fashion in the fashions of the times. 
But when we come and we bring about an answer to the summoning, behold, it comes to pass that men are lifted up even as a moth is attracted by the flame for a moment and then there is the singeing of the wings of karma and the downfall of the moth into the fiery flame for the purpose was not salient, the purpose was not victorious, the purpose was not pure and individuals were not ready to be fashioned. They were not ready to become malleable and therefore there continued in their mind and being the turmoil and the unhappiness that was their heritage from the flesh and from their forefathers. The progenitors then of mankind have become those who have fallen from grace and perfection. And behold, the elder race and all that they have taught has been ignored in action far too much, whereas the unrealities and the darkness has been gathered around them as though it were a comfortable cloak whereby they could walk and not be seen. But the eye of God is everywhere, and the eye of God that is seen in initiation is everywhere, and the peering of that ineffable light into the domain of mankind's consciousness, whereby that light discovers every secret intent and brings it to light, that it may burst into purification and the fount of purity and be washed must be produced. For when it is produced, behold, as Magdalene stood then before Christ, before his eye had discovered her sin, and then afterward, behold, she was as one clothed upon with vestments of white linen, and her thoughts were pure, and she was lifted up. Let all understand then that the beautiful mission of the Lord Christ and the beautiful mission of every avatar who has come from the higher mountain has descended from the summit of consecrated consciousness upon the altar of God to the plains below, to the realm of Tabor, to the realm of the Table Mountain, to the realm of the common plain. Into the world has come the avatar, the descending one, the star with his flashing meteoric power, and he has descended into the world as the teacher. And behold, he is worn clean in white linen, and the world has rendered him. The world has turned aside. The world has preferred to dawdle. And we come then to those who are willing to understand the summoning to the election, who will understand that the eye of God that is everywhere is the eye of creative intent to magnify in person all that is of beauty and perfection, to remove the mask persona and to produce the immortal shining that is within the splendor of the flame of life that is within thee. This is the flame that can say I live. This is the flame that can say I give. This is the flame, Ikdin, that loves to serve, that loves to give. This is the flame of hope that ye are. This is the flame of identity that becomes a star radiating out into the world community the self-same hope of the Christ of the one spirit, of the one mind, of immortal life, of the passion of the free, of all that is of beauty and of light. From the light I have come, to the light I shall return, and the brothers in white who walk with me, they who are aware of the savagery of the world and of this generation, say unto you all, the need for essential unity has never been greater nor has the need for consummate understanding of the meaning of life ever been a greater requirement than that which is the requirement of this hour. Let all then with open mind and heart, with receptive cups of consciousness, understand the sending that we do from time to time on wings of thought with beauteous radiance we send out thought, and when that thought unto mankind is brought, it is the intention of the gods not to make man mad because they would destroy him, but to make man glad because they would remove in him all that is of mortal dross and mend the vessel at any cost, restoring it to its own rightful place of beauty, of love, of perfection. 
All of this God is, all of this the masters are, and it is given unto you all. It is initiation. It is the initiation of those splendid moments that come to you because you are willing to summon the will that God is instilling. Hear us now then and accept the vibratory action of the will of God which is descending into the city of Washington in the hope that we may yet reinforce in the people of this nation an understanding of their destiny, an understanding of their greatness, an understanding of all that they can do of action to produce the miracle of perfection in the world in this hour when little children on bended knee do cry out to the God of power and say, help us now. The world today knows, blessed ones, the turmoil and woes that are descending invoked from the karmic bands of mankind. The world knows and awaits the descent of that star wormwood. The world knows the cup of bitterness and the cup of woe, but it is the wish of heaven to end it so much, so very much, that as I am speaking to you, the Archangel Gabriel has descended into this room and is flooding his light throughout this city tonight in order that mankind may feel the pulsations of the Annunciation. For there are today being born as there are being born every day countless little babes who have a roseate face of hope within their soul. They come fresh from heaven's own hands into a world and they seek and demand a higher standard than society has produced. The angel of the Annunciation, Lord Gabriel then, is radiating out from this city to every mother and every mother-to-be and to the mothers of the whole world that great love that speaks of each man finding his place in life and understanding that that is not a place of dullness, a place of strife, a place of confusion, but is a place of absolutism, of perfection, of eternal time that transcends mortal time and mortal space. Out of the depths thou hast called unto me, and I have heard your voice, and I am come. And with me there is a greater company than all that dwell in this great city, and the forces of light that are many are serving tonight to free the world from strife and fear and confusion. Will you help me? Will you serve? Will you seek to understand? God help mankind through your hands and the hands of all who are willing. Ladies and gentlemen, in the name of the cosmic Christ and by the power of his might, I salute that flame within your heart. I thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
gracious people of the city of New York, the incomparable love of God flows to this planet in its hour of peril. The Indian Council stands united together with every facet of the great white brotherhood to pour out every effort on behalf of divine purpose and for the assuagement of mortal grief. The purposes of God in their glowing perfection, radiant with the fires of reality, stand now ready to pierce the veil of illusion by which the consciousness of mankind is surfeited with all of the frustration and fear of human creation. God would wipe away all tears from mortal eyes and take from mankind those blinding and divisive fears whereby the world is broken up into fragments of reality and the power of divine unity is stopped. As we come to you this night, it is with a burning desire to see the body of God upon the planetary body. Those who are desirous of serving the purposes of life have a greater measure of understanding of how that the yearnings from within their soul can be achieved. We know that this cannot be done through mere mortal effort, but only through a God determination and realization whereby the flesh and consciousness can throw off its discord and spirit of dissonance and understand that harmony is the first law of creation for it presages even order and is the basis of order in essence. We come then tonight with a glowing face of cosmic hope a hope that today burns supremely in the heart of God within the great central sun of purpose. Purpose is central to every man, and purpose is the reality that must be born right where you are. I am come then this night together with other members of the Indian Council to assure you that the spirit of the great white brotherhood has never died and never will. It is alive forevermore, not only in the hearts of the people, those who love us and love God, but also in the ascended host themselves, who can, together with your own beloved Jesus, affirm with all that burning sense of reality which we are, I am the resurrection and the life. You must understand that mortal appearances, blessed ones, have no power to deter the manifestation of that God intent that is within you. You must understand that there are forces of shadow that surround not only this city, but every city upon the planet and seek to encompass man round about with a mortal sea of errors and bring great distress to his consciousness. This shall not prevail, for it is the intention of the great white brotherhood to produce the miracle of God perfection upon the planetary body and in the hearts of individual mankind. We are aware that in the moment of trial, it would seem as though evil conditions have triumphed and as though the veil of mortality has indeed succeeded in suppressing the divine intent in manifest action. We hasten, however, to assure you that such is not the case for the cosmic law of purpose that clearly states the light of God never fails. The light of God never fails. The light of God never fails is more abundant forever this night. For as each moment in orderly progression proceeds forth from the purposes of our Father, from those many mansions, behold, it comes to pass that all life is pulsating at a greater rate. Some may say, well, how can this thing be? For I do not feel it. Blessed ones, I assure you that you may not be aware of the functions of your own liver or digestive juices, but nevertheless, they do function and produce that harmony of the good life 
which causes you to manifest good health in action here below. And I assure you that there are many invisible forces which you may not of necessity feel for your own lack of development, but they still do exist. And this includes those burning cosmic rays that pulsate throughout space and come to this planetary body to convey the remnants of the divine seed and cosmic nourishment even as the manna fell from heaven upon the desert floor at the time of the children of Israel's journey through the wilderness. I assure you then, blessed ones, that the pulsations of the divine ideal are constantly descending upon the planetary body, that these are forces of light whose natural origin and beauty are the perfection and majesty of light. You do well then to understand that the radiance of God that is within you is a living thing, a power vested with beauty and perfection innately within and manifesting without as you yourselves invoke by thought, word, and deed the perfection of the immortal presence through understanding the divine credo, I believe. When you understand the measure of faith pulsating within you as the power to generate action, you cannot for one moment forestall that action from immediately coming into manifestation and producing the miracle of cosmic love. Cosmic love and cosmic light are able tonight to pulsate not only through this city and create the miracle of beauty from that gorgeous statue which is within your harbor of the goddess of liberty at inner levels, but are able also to produce throughout this land the miracle of the sense of liberty becoming revived in the hearts of the American people. We have thought much upon the necessity of revitalizing the constitutional fervor that in the early days of George Washington pulsated as a flame, which you call the flame of revolution. I assure you that the revolution that occurred at that time was a revolution of necessity to create this great nation and produce the miracle of ascended master love that would become a thing of beauty and joy forever to this land. But that light has become bedimmed in the hearts of generations who have not absorbed the understanding of the rigors of bringing forth a nation. For once the nation is builded in form and materia, it comes to pass that the hearts of the people are surfeited by the manifestations of that which they find, and therefore there seems to be no necessity of their struggle to produce the miracle and continuance of all that has been in the past. And therefore there is a tendency toward decline, as you would understand in Gibbon's decline and fall of the Roman Empire, and as you understand also in the manifestation of that empire and all empires which have come to naught and have passed away because their cycle was complete. But America's destiny is incomplete and she stands today at the apex of hope regardless of outer manifestations as this beloved messenger has told you. And I assure you that at inner levels the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood pulsating with the majesty of God's purpose are drawing together hearts of people all over this land in order to fire men with that devotion which will take command of all of the emotions and struggles and sense of struggles which they are experiencing in all of their daily lives and the vicissitudes of nature and all of nature's interplay of forces upon their being which they often seek to assuage but are unable. I assure you then that every ascended master and cosmic being every individual concerned with the manifestation of life's perfection upon the planet are engaged in this struggle that must come to a point where victory comes unto all men and is the manifestation of their life. Beloved ones, your life is not your own. Your life belongs unto cosmic purpose. One of the great frustrations of life is the fact that individuals feel that their life is their own and do not understand that through the yielding of the light of each individual to the Godhead, there is the possibility of a greater expression, not a lesser. So many are prone to believe that if they yield themselves unto the powers of light and the powers of the universe, they will in effect lose themselves or become castaways from some reality that should and ought to manifest here. Yet they know from all the frustrating experiences that they have had that the manifestations of life below are not satisfying to the yearnings of the soul and therefore they continue to seek to remove the pressures of life and to find deliverance. 
We today are concerned that that deliverance should be born not only in the hearts of the few, but also in the hearts of the many. And therefore, heaven itself does come down as we do this night into your presence and midst to bring you a sense of that great reality that belongs unto yourself and the comfort of that reality. Won't you then tonight take all of your cares and sense of care and concern and cast them into that blessed violet transmuting flame which God has created to pulsate here upon this planet below which is sustained so greatly by Lord Zadkiel who had his focus for so long over the island of Cuba and your own beloved holy amethyst together with your beloved Saint Germain won't you join me tonight in the ritual of casting your fears and negativities and sense of frustration and limitation into that flame with a viewpoint that when the dawn comes on the morrow it will see it all consumed. You must understand, blessed ones, that in the mere ritual of so doing there is the possibility and beauty of forecasting for yourselves the reality that one day shall be. For if Almighty God has envisioned for you the perfection of himself. Surely it is in perfect order that you should visualize with him for that self-same perfection to manifest in your world. Simply because it did not manifest yesterday does not mean that it cannot manifest today and will not manifest tomorrow. Mankind should understand that they can, when they take preeminence and dominance over their world, put down those outer conditions that cause them so much distress and enter into a spirit of overcoming, which spirit will produce the miracles that they seek simply because the faith that they have is translated into action by an inner activity of the light, whereby the light actually flows across the electrode of being and bridges the gap of manifestation, producing not the outer manifestation of animalism, but the perfection of the spirit of life itself in all of its original and shining divine intent. Won't you, blessed ones, enter into the spirit of that tonight? Won't you enter into the spirit of that perfection? Will you not understand that this is within you and within the city and within the potential of every life stream who will accept it? You see, precious ones, so long as individuals are willing to accept their limitations, they can never find the means of overcoming them, for they are somewhat content with them and surfeited with them all at the same time. And it is actually a very tremendous condition of a juxtaposition of forces, one side of them at war with the other side of themselves. And this does not produce the harmony which God seeks to have manifest. Please understand, precious ones, that the light is stronger than the darkness. Understand that life is stronger than death. Understand that beauty is greater than ugliness. Understand that our counsels are wiser than the counsels of this world. For we are able, at a word, to alter our conditions, but we obediently conduct ourselves according to the principles of Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending of life. We observe cosmic law. Can you do less than your own beloved Jesus clearly stated in his mission that the law and the prophets were abrogated by the law of love? That all understand then that the power of love to overcome does not mean that love is weaker than outer conditions. I cite to your attention the activity of Mohandas Karamachand Gandhi from our own land of India who achieved emancipation from Great Britain's dominance of many years through the power of his great love in Satyagraha. I want to call your attention then that there have come also to this planet the miracle of many avatars whose beauty of spirit and soul has been a gentle breeze that has wafted into the hearts and lives of the millions of mankind untold blessings of light and love and perfection. The power of God is not something that is not full of redundance. The power of God has redundance. It has the power of amplification, the power of expansion, the power of perfection, and the power to seal the power to heal, the power to engender in man the realization of all that God intends to be produced upon the planetary body. Now, as I am speaking to you tonight, there are also other councils that are meeting throughout the world, 
and these are not counsels of light. Measures are being determined how the world can be splintered up still further, how races can be turned against races in order to create and breed violence in this land and other lands. This is part of a vast communist manifesto, a vast communist expansion seeking to produce in the outer realm the freedom for the masses which God would actually produce through the miracle of cosmic reality in the individual. Men should understand then that from the time of Rasputin who actually enticed to hypnotic power the Tsarina of Russia, the awful dragon of communism has actually reared its head upon this planetary body and today in China is a beast whose tail can lash the seven seas and will within the next 10 years if mankind are not careful according to the admonishment of your own beloved mother Mary who has clearly pointed this out to us in her consultation with Kuan Yin produce a most terrible disturbance that will not only lash out against Japan but may also cause a temporary coalition between Russia that will indeed be temporary and short lived for once Russia would succeed in producing through union with China the domination of all of the democratic powers of the world, I assure you that China would herself intend to become master of the world. We are aware at inner levels of this awful intent to produce the most terrible activity of Marxism upon the planetary body, whereby there will be no longer any freedom to any among mankind, but only the power of the state to rule. And we trust that those of you in whom burns the flame of liberty will understand that that flame is short-lived unless mankind shall produce the miracle of feeding it. For if mankind shall not sustain that flame in this hour of crisis, I assure you that it will come to pass that it will seem to die out, for it will be overcome by outer conditions. This is not your desire, and it is not the desire of the heavenly hierarchy. The heavenly hierarchy are concerned only with the beauty and perfection of true statesmanship, with true diplomacy, with true expansion of love, with true philosophy, the love of wisdom that filling the hearts of men spills over from nation to nation and enables them to see that although the world may be shaken in diverse places by wars and rumors of wars and awful conditions coming unto individual mankind, that through the miracle of the cosmic law, the law of infinite love, the law of Christ's love, the law of Christ's unity, the law of Christ's diamity, individuals can come to the place where they can clasp their brother's hand in that miracle of perfection and beauty which has no ulterior motive concealed within its bosom as a dagger desiring to plunge it into one another's heart but is itself the circumspect activity of the law of love which goes forth to produce the miracle and beauty of Christhood to all the family of nations now I come to you to tell you that on this spot, right where I am speaking to you, there is going to be produced a cleavage unless there shall be an activity of perfection in this nation great enough to stop it. For this nation itself is being divided in New York more than anywhere else. And simply because it has not surfaced does not mean that it will not. And I say unto you all, everyone, pray as you have never prayed before. Radiate light as you have never radiated light before. Determine that as this is the seat of liberty, that it will be the seat of liberty. When the capital of the United States was established here, I tell you that it was a specific activity that created a very blessed opportunity for you in this day and age to once again show to the world that New York can arise from the lethargy and sleep of the senses from the doldrums of Coney Island and all of your miasmic experiences of glitter and glamour and the production and sustainment in outer form and manifestation of stylism to the world and produce the miracle of the divine style, the miracle of the divine beauty. I tell you today that the world is something like a mad hatter from Alice in Wonderland. They are more concerned with the outer glamour and show of experience than they are with the hidden inner experience of the soul whereby the beauty of Christ experience vouchsafes to every man that he lives now and ever shall that his robes that he wears today shall be transmuted from darkness unto light.
that by the miracle of cosmic visualization and perfection, the great white brotherhood can take mankind by the hand and lead them to that crowning climax of experience where they can understand that the beauty of their own beloved God presence, their own beloved I am, is the mighty image of God which he vested all life with at the moment of creation and said, let there be light and there was light and that light was the beauty of wholeness unto all the adamic experiences that subsequently came whereby cain slew his brother through the sense of frustration and separation through egoistic consciousness culminated also in the experiences of nimrod who built it out of the very clay of the earth the city of babylon the words babylon babylon how art thou fallen, how art thou fallen shall also be spoken of this city unless this city shall experience through understanding the full power of its own cosmic action. When New York arises, no greater city upon this continent can live, for New York holds within itself the wonderful power of miracle perfection to show to the world that it can be a city of light spanning and framing a continent with a perfection and beauty extending across the bridges and arches of light to Los Angeles and showing the example of harmony and brotherhood to all people. We in India today of the Indian Council speak to the very heart of America and say to you all that this is true wisdom, that harmony shall be harnessed that experience shall be builded, that men shall pledge their fortunes, their sacred honor and themselves upon the altar of Almighty God, that they may understand that the end of hostility is the beginning of true love. In the name of Almighty God and the spirit of universal brotherhood, I salute you and I bless you and I thank you, and I adjure you, and I compromise you not, for the time for darkness is spent, and the time for day spring action from on high is at hand. The day star from on high hath visited you this night, and it is in the radiance of the light that God has placed within you. It is the sacred chalice of the Magi, it is the Holy Grail. It is the sense of the universality of the soul. It is the sense of resurrection that makes you whole. It is the beauty of God within. Life, abundant life, come forth. Life, abundant life, command. Life, abundant life, burst forth. Love does now demand. Beauty must, through love, rule throughout this land. I think.